this little guy here or come out of Minnesota. That was my seventh decade buck. In, uh, what do you mean by that? That was your seventh decade hunting, or you you were 70 when you shot it? Seventh decade I've shot a deer in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I shot a little button buck this year, and it makes eight decades I've shot a buck in. How about that? So, been, been around a little Where's that mounted? It's not. <laughs> <laughs> well, come on, it's the eight decade buck. I've gotten it almost eaten up as a little guy. Yeah. All right, so what, what did this guy weigh here? That one dressed 240. Jesus, you can just tell he's big. This guy was face. 250. I've got 15 bucks that dressed over 200, 200 or better. <laughs> and this I'd done a hand in uh, burning. I had an idea. Uh, Deb Brosen done these for me. Yep. Uh, the painting, and she painted the actual deer on the skull. The actual deer. Yeah, 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 yeah. so that's, that's yeah. him. Yeah, yeah. Yep. That's a and good idea. so I took and burnt this one on. <laughs> so that's awesome. I said I can do that myself. Well, that's, so a, I, that's a great idea. I burnt the actual deer on that. We'll we'll go around. We'll get into this one later. That's a great tracking story on that one. I that's my eight foot buck. I shot him at eight feet. Uh, Jeez, that's mean. Yeah, oh, he only dressed 170 pounds. Last day of muzzleload. Look at that rack. Oh, no, gosh. What does he score? Uh, 156. And 5 eighths, I believe it is. Eight, Most of these tracking? All of them tracking? Uh, no. No. Tracking, rattling, just stumbling. All right. What's this yeah. one here? Are you Maine? No. He was uh, Ontario. Yep. This is the Maine buck. That's my last big main buck. Jeez, he is gorgeous. That's 20. Yeah, that's my widest one. Too. Wow, really gorgeous rack, huh? And this one, I got them all named. That one I call Boots. I can tell the story on that one later, too, if you want. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, that was Maine. These two, Minnesota. Uh, starting here, I call this Ten Point Alley. The this next 10 bucks are all Ten Point. Ten Point Alley starting here. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh,. That's one of the curly horn of New Brunswick. Wow. I got his jawbone I can show you. That's a unique rack. I to grab it. You can see why he had a messed up rack. That's his jawbone. Hmm. They get infected. They get stuff in between the jaw and it gets infected. <laughs> yep. And, uh, you want that, don't he you, also, had a hind broken leg that was broke off and bypassed about three inches and fused back together. All these were old injuries when I shot him. Hmm. Yeah. He dressed 212, but he was framed. He could have easily gone 240. He had a little better life. Well, that's a really unique yeah. rack. He's a he's a great deer. Yeah. Did you know how, how much he, uh, or how old he was? Uh, six and a half, possibly seven and a half. Hmm. That's a cool rack. This uh, Idaho buck. Still in Ten Point Alley here? Yeah. yeah. And that's Ontario. This one's Ontario. All with guns or are you, sh you using bow yeah, at all? Gun. Yep. No, I, I bow hunted years ago. I shot one doe with a bow. I haven't bow hunted since 1980. Yep. And I, don't know, I just got away from it. Uh, the last Ten Point in a row, that's my biggest Deer that come out of Maine, dressed 260. 260. 260. The Hunt Suburbia podcast presents the Living Legends of Deer Hunting series, a special three part series with deer hunting legend Connecticut Carl, Carl Leeser. Well, that's a beautiful buck too, and really unique coloring to that yeah. rack. You know, uh, that was the last deer that uh, my old taxidermist mounted up, and he says the thickest hair on a deer that he ever mounted. Huh. Now, would that taxidermist in Minnesota do it, or you brought him back? No, here? brought him back. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I used to use Mohican Sun. That was that was ninety nine. That was his fiftieth. Year in business. What does that one score? Do you, the Minnesota. Uh, 134. Yep. Yeah. I never seen a rack that color, I don't think. Is that 
unique to Minnesota. Yeah, kinda, min- yeah, yeah. I'm starting to get that Midwest color. Yeah. And, and they get them uh, oh, Norway pine, a lot of Norway pine out there, and the pitch on them. Like the same thing up in Ontario and Manitoba and them places, same coloration. And then what about this buck here? That's Minnesota. That's Minnesota. Yeah. What's his story? Was he tracking or? No, no. Driving down the road and I see him going up across the clear cut. I got out in and circled around and caught up on him over in the back. Dumped him down. Just cut him off. Yep. Yep. Now, let's go back to this one real quick. You rattled him up. So what was going on that you stopped to rattle or how, how did you rattle this one up here? Just rattling. Walking they, and rattling? They walk in no, and rattling? No, walked and set up and rattled. Yep. Yeah. To a spot that looked yep. looked like a good spot? Yep. 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 Well, down over in the woods in that area, I found a spring down in there. Yep. Boy, it was all tracked up in deer. Even <laughs> though there was a little brook ran down through there, but boy, they liked, I don't know if it was cool water or whatever, but they, they were in around that spring. It was all hmm. tracked up. So I was maybe set up about 250 yards from that. When you're rattling. I rattled a few in uh, Idaho buck there. I rattled him in. This one? Yeah. Went out there in 95. After I met Gary, uh, he was going to uh, Montana. There was five guys together that got drawn from Montana. Yep. And so he says to me, I know you like to hunt. He says, uh, you can't hunt Montana because you got to put But Idaho is wide open. You buy a license over the border. He says, we're staying in Libby, Montana, 30 miles from Idaho. So <laughs> That works out. Drove over to the bar. My brother-in-law went out with him and ended up rattling him in. That's great. Yeah. Now, what do you do? What do you that use for? 150. Do you, you rattle, you use ra- rattling horns, something, yeah. some sheds. Yeah. Or you yeah. use big old heavy ones. Like, what's your strategy well, with it? I started rattling with, with a seven-pointer I shot. Made some rattling in those years ago. And uh, I had had some success. I hadn't rattled anything big and a couple of small ones. And uh, so then we got into shed hunting. I said, geez, I a couple big sheds. He said, well, I'm going to give me some big, you know, shake these bones, you know. I, I want a big <laughs> buck come in. I don't want these little ones come yeah, in. Yeah. Because the little horns are tinky. And so. I went to the bigger horns. You know, the only thing I ever rattled in them big horns was moose. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> rattled one in up in Maine, and when I was out in uh, Minnesota, huh. I rattled, oh, he was a big guy in Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> he come up over the hill, walked up. I quit rattling because he walked up about 50 yards from me. <laughs> and I said, I ain't rattling no more. <laughs> that sucker charged me. He was a big guy. Big oh. rack on him. So then I went back, I picked up a nice set of, uh, match set of sheds, smaller, and I went back to the smaller, more tinkler, huh. and started getting more success back again. But the big heavy ones, I don't know, they, I think they were too heavy. Yeah. That's cool, because I've heard... Uh... Of course, you know, um, to put them in a backpack, you, you got to... Knock yeah. the length of the points down a little bit so you can fit them in a pack. So yep. it kind of took the tinkling away from them. Yep. Yeah, because some people have told me to, if you want to rattle in bigger bucks, get those bigger, heavier yeah. horns. Yeah. And then, you know, I, I've been using a small I've, eight I've, point sheds yeah, I found, that I found. I, found I had more success with them when I tried the big ones. I carried them around for five or six years. Yeah. Yeah. You probably called in, <coughs> you probably called in over the years a lot of yeah. small bucks that you Quartz, passed too, right? Uh, up in Maine is it? You know, it's a tough place to rattle. You know, there's not a lot of deer, so it's it is a tough place to rattle. Yeah, you gotta have a lot of bucks in one yeah. area, right? But I've rattled them in. I I've called them. I've, I've worked bucks with calls and stuff. Like I said, that one nine point there, I worked in with the doe. I got actually by good luck, I separated it too, so it was an easy call. Yeah, you know, when yeah. you heard the other buck, then you can burn them back in. But I got one over here, that six-pointer. Yeah, there, yeah. Up in Ontario. I'm 
work on the edge of a uh, of his, what they call a rice river, just a brook, but huge big swale grass on both sides of it. And come across an area where it's flat, it was all grass with old dead trees, you know, and I was working around the edge of it. Pretty soon, deer blew, blows at me. And, well, he, he's got me. So I got out the doe call and tooted on that a couple, three times, you know, and waited a little bit, you know. Then I got the grunter out and grunted it. When I grunted, and then I, I see him move. So now, now I got him pinpointed, you know, he's still there. So I went back to the doe call a couple of times, you know. And I got the grunter back, and I don't know, third or fourth time I grunted. <laughs> Boy, he come charging out of there, blowing. Run right out into that open swale grass. <laughs> Probably about a 75, 80 yard shot. And I dumped him. Yeah. But here, he, he had me pinpointed. Yep. And I talked to him. I, I know there had to have been a doe going through it. You know, he was trailing a doe. It had to have been a doe there. You know, and, and then when I started talking with him on the call, he got them all worked up. And he come charging out. I mean, he just, whoo, whoo, whoo. He blowing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean so far for me i haven't uh i haven't you know i've been calling i've been rattling yeah. last last couple of years and i i haven't get one, gotten one to charge in like that you know where yeah. they just they just come barreling out yeah. it hasn't happened yeah. yet i see they come in in cautiously they yeah. kind of keep yeah, a distance the time they will. Yeah. you know yeah i'm waiting for that i'd love to have that but you get that there's usually a doe involved yeah yeah They'll get them worked up. And yeah. Running in. So if you're if you're tracking a buck or you just you're still hunting whatever, you come across some tracks and you see that they're with a doe and you might be getting a little bit close. That's a really good time to probably start calling, right? Uh, uh yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. if you, if you want to yeah. do that, yeah. you could sneak up on them too. Yeah. But it's probably is it harder with it when they're with a doe when you're tracking to sneak yeah. up on them and get a kill, or do you like it? Is it better? Uh. A lot of times that old doe will give you up. <laughs> uh, I had a doe pick give me up the other uh, the other year here. Yeah, she yeah. came in with a, a 150, 155, yeah. just giant nine pointer that I was after, and I, uh, I was peeking over my. I heard him coming, and I was peeking peeking over my shoulder, and I was like, "Oh man, they're already so close." They snuck in on me. I didn't hear him. You know, I heard a, a twig snap, but they were already. She was thirty yards. He was. 35 yards yeah. and she uh i i just turned ever so slightly and i was up in a tree stand too but she she picked me off she gave me up they never came in any closer yeah yeah those girls will get you yeah oh yeah <laughs> they'll give you up a good many times yeah. you got any marital advice for the for the listeners speaking about women <laughs> well <laughs> I've been happily divorced for 34 years, <laughs> 34 best years of my life. <laughs> I got nothing against marriage. I think yeah. it's great if you got the right one, but yeah. I don't know. I just so wait a minute. wasn't a good judge of Wait uh, a minute woman. now. 34 years, that's about 1988 or 89. Yeah, yeah. it's 88. And you started yeah. shooting big then bucks I, in yeah. 1991. Then I started hunting. <laughs> oh, and, uh, didn't have the wife spending my money, so I had more money to go hunting. <laughs> now it's starting to make sense. Now it's starting to make sense. Yeah, and then it was, I don't know, around 2000. I quit playing golf. I just quit golf a couple of years ago, I, too. I was threatening to, and... The game is too slow, you know. We tee off first thing in the morning, and end up five hours on a round, yeah. you know. Yeah. I was pretty good stick. I was a five handicap when I quit. Wow. Yeah, I, I love really playing the game, but I quit golf and I went back working six days a week and take the whole winter off. When come hunting season, I was done till spring. <laughs> <laughs> well, I always no more laying stone in the middle of the winter, and freezing cold and stuff. So. Uh, to my friends who love golf, and I, I liked it for a little while too, but I always say like it's it does it takes so much time. Yeah. It takes so much time, and even when I bet you you're a five handicap, 
you were still frustrated every single round. I mean, you never had a round that was perfect. You still probably got frustrated Close yourself, the one. right? Yeah. We used to play that they called a wing ding. We played nine holes. We'd pick up teams. Mm-hmm. And I was captain of the team over at Meriden. On the back nine, I had five birdies, one bogey. I shot four under on my own <laughs> ball. <laughs> Obviously, we won the wing ding that night. Yeah. Well, <laughs> there you time. go. There's a couple, there's a couple yeah. of rounds definitely you feel great. Yeah, right? yeah. But. Yeah. I never broke par. I shot even par a couple of times, so I never shot under par outside of that nine holes. Yeah. I've done that a number of times, but not for the whole 18. But it takes up all that time. It's time you could get scouting. Now you're yeah. a big shed hunter, right? Yeah. It's, Spend it doing other stuff, and at least with deer hunting, you got you get the story, you get the meat, you've got you've got all kinds of rewards yeah, at the end of yeah, it, you know. Yeah. Whereas I don't know too many yeah. people who are who are. We got sheds all over the place. <laughs> these these are sheds. Actually, that's a set of main sheds I picked up. I didn't find them. That's a set of sheds I found. Yeah, well, show show the folks that one there. That's your best shed, right, for deer. Yeah, yeah, that's that. One, what, what? Nine, 90 and five eights. 90 and five eights. Yep. yep. Doubled up 18 inch spread, 199 and two eights. <laughs> and you know he had more than an 18 inch spread. About about that. Yeah. Look at that. that that's really the, just the double split there yeah. that's that's very symmetrical. Actually, it was January 5th I picked that up. I went up the northwest corner. Uh, I was hunting up there in the fall and found a fair amount of moose activity where I was hunting. So I went up in the check to see if I could find the Connecticut moose shed, which I've never done yet. Oh, yeah? I guess spend a little more time at it, but yeah, I was actually looking. And when I see that one, I thought I had a moose shed. I thought I was looking something like that <laughs> yeah. sticking up, you know? Yeah. I would, too. <laughs> yeah, I was happy. Yeah, I got moose shed, you know? I, I spotted the thing. I was probably a good 35, 40 yards from it. After four or five steps towards, I was like, oh. That is something special. Then I started cussing and swearing to myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm going, yeah, the closer I got, yeah. <laughs> Did you try to find, you obviously tried to find the other side, right? You oh, yeah. Searched all 54 around. 54 hours and looking for the other side, nothing. <laughs> never, never even found another piece of bone in the area. Huh. And did you ever go try to hunt it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. I went back up there next hunting season. That's for sure. Yeah. Just no sign, huh? No. Did you go in there in the snow and look around for tracks? Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. Not a lot. Not a lot of dairy up, deer up in that area. Yep. A lot of good sheds. When did you start really getting into shed hunting? Because as accomplished of a deer hunter as you are, oh, you're like you're ago, very accomplished shed shed 20 hunter. Twenty years ago. Twenty years. Yeah. And moose, you love getting the moose antlers, huh? Yeah, I should have started that 20 years before I did. Yeah, you know, I, yeah the good years. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was good. Yeah. I mean, I, I got into some, I found some good yards that nobody was hunting. But not anymore. They started to hunt everything. But you never had a desire to hunt the moose, though, huh? You like no. picking up the antlers, but, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I just, well, when I first started going to Maine, 1980, it was, it was right then, I think the first season opened in 81. These moose weren't scared. they stand there on the edge of the road, and you drive right past them. they just stand there and look at you, you know. You know they, yeah, people used to just kill them from the road most of the yeah, time, right? Yeah. In the early yeah. seasons there. They still do. Yeah. Call him out to the road. Yeah. Yeah. Jim's the only one I know that wants to go in the woods and shoot him. <laughs> yeah, I think Jim told me that one yeah. when I did the podcast yeah. with him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he said, he said, he said, I don't want to shoot that thing from the road. He said, I'm yeah. going up in the woods. Yeah. Yeah, I went to Anticostia a couple of years, and you could shoot them from the road, and I just didn't yeah. want to do that. Yeah. I shot I shot one one year, I think, uh, from the road there, and I just did not like it, didn't like the feeling. Felt way too easy. Yeah. Yeah. So did have you gone moose hunting at all? 
just with Jim. Oh, you, you went know? with Jim. Yeah, it's the only moose on I've been. Oh on. yeah, he might. I mean, he might have told that story yeah. too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Were you the second, second shot no, on it, or no, you were? Son, son was. Okay. I was just a helper. Yeah. Me and another friend. And they got yeah. one, right? Yeah. 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 We went up. We were scouting and got up there. The week before, there was about. I think we got up there on a Monday. And we scouted the rest of the week, and season opened the following Monday. We didn't locate that moose until Saturday, and that was from a tip from a logger. Trucker hauling logs. Yeah. They knew where a good and one it was. It took us a day to figure out where he told us to go because we go on that <laughs> road and then it dead ended. It turned into other. What the hell is he talking about? We finally figured it, it was right on one of the main roads. It, so we, we knew that was the visible moose. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And they went down Sunday, and he was right there Sunday. Picked up another cow. He's with one cow, and now he's with two. So I said to Jim, I said, boy, I said, everybody knows that moose. That he's a visible moose. <laughs> I says, we're going to be down there. I said, before 4 o'clock tomorrow morning. Staked that spot out, and we was. We down there had to wait two and a half hours for legal shooting time, but Jim parked where he was going to park. The other guy parked quarter mile down the road. I went up the road about another quarter mile and parked. <laughs> we had that stationed right off. I wasn't there 15 minutes, and here comes the guy driving up through about five miles an hour. <laughs> I know he was. <laughs> He was looking for that moose. <laughs> then probably uh, 20 minutes for a legal shooting time, an outfitter come with a client, and I was parked on a corner, and he went up the road where I was parked at. And they said, oh, shit, he's going up that road. Ain't that far over for where Jim is in there. And they were camping up there, parking, you know, but they were just waiting for... Uh, to get light legal shooting time, because mm -hmm. they they had a tower, one of them, <laughs> a tower and a pickup truck, and they got yep. a guy up in the tower, and they started <laughs> up the road. They come around later after we got the moose, want to know which one we got, the light horn one or the dark one. We said we got the dark one, so it was another big one in there, light horned one. Hmm. You don't see a lot of moose light horn, do you? Uh, yes I, and no. I guess I guess yes you do, no. yeah. But. yeah. Most of the, it seems like that white one upstairs is, is pretty light, yeah. but a lot of these, uh, some of the sheds I got, I've colored them up a little bit. Yeah, dress they them up. They weren't fresh. They get bleached out. You gotta color them. But... So you have killed a deer in eight different decades. Eight different decades. And you're gonna go for nine. Yeah. Twenty thirty. 2030. And make it nine if I'm still around. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you will be. <laughs> Probably be out there hunting in a wheelchair. But... What are you doing these days for hunting? Did you get one? Did you get a deer this last season? How yeah, was the your button season? buck. Oh, that was the one. Yeah. yeah. When I could have broke it the year before, I got eight days. I, I didn't get a deer. Yeah. So when this little button buck stepped up, I didn't know it was a button buck. I, I wanted some meat. Yeah. I, normally I hunt up in the northwest corner, but I, I went down. Yep. Southeast of here, there's more deer down that way because I I gotta get some meat. Yeah. So, so what uh, what's your strategy now as you're getting up in years? What are you what are you doing differently? Are you just not walking as far? But you're you're still just walking. You, you still gotta, walking. You gotta still be walking. walking. Yeah. 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 I do a little more sitting because I you know I walk for half an hour. Take I gotta sit break. for five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Every time you find a buck bed, take take a break. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and but mostly you're not going up to Maine to hunt anymore or anything like that. Or? No, I'm I'm done with Maine. I I quit the Allagash. I went to uh, Sherman Mills last year, yeah, but I'm this year I'm hunting Connecticut. Yeah, I got a uh, got in on some water company property up in Harrington. Tried to get in up at Bar Campstead up in that section. A friend of mine gets in up there, but yep. It was all taken up, so when this other one opened up, he put put my name in because I'm not online to do that stuff, so. And I got drawn for it, so. 
Cool. That's rifle. You can use rifle there. Uh, geez, I'm not sure. Yeah. I just, it feels. I'm waiting, you know, it'll probably be this fall. I've got to go to a meeting, you know, and meet yeah. with the people. Yeah. Go over their rules and regs, whatever they want. Cool. And, uh, but I'm going to hunt, hunt Connecticut. What are the odds of a 200 because, pounder down here? Uh, I didn't put in for state forest, but there are a couple of state forests where it's wide open. Yep. You don't, you don't have to put in a lottery for it. So I can hunt those. Yep. And I can hunt muzzle loader and shotgun. So I, I do have a shotgun, but I'd rather hunt with my muzzle loader. Yeah. What are you using for a muzzle loader? I got a tradition. Yeah. 50 cal. Yep. Shoots good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Did you always use scopes on your guns, or did you have open sights at all? Or uh, I went to a scope on everything about the time I turned 40. Uh, started, you know, at the time I started needing glasses. Yeah. I had trouble seeing the sights. Yeah. What I would do would fatten the sight up and shoot high. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, 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 hunting up in Glastonbury shotgun season and uh, nice big buck I shot right over his back I said, oh. <laughs> <laughs> how many big bucks have you missed <laughs> oh, a number of them. <laughs> one in New Brunswick haunts me the one haunts we told me. the story about already no 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 I Went in a piece of woods and uh, found a track, small buck. I said, well, I, I've done that a lot, too. Uh, you know it's not a big buck, but follow it. And it did it, take you where the big buck is nine out of ten times. And uh, so I know I took this little one and went way back up and on the ridge. And... Uh, Got me into big buck track. I didn't follow it very far, and there's a good five-inch beech tree all hooked up fresh, laying in, peeling top of the snow. I took the track down off that ridge, down across the hollow, and going up the ridge on the other side. <laughs> Here, turn that that way just a little bit. Yep. In the uh, pretty stone, I spotted him and I stopped and I'm looking and I could just see his nose but his antlers coming out past his nose that's a good sign Boy, he's a big rack and there's two trees and I could see it like right behind his shoulder between them two trees and I can see about that much of his back above and boy shoot just to the top of that snow i'll get in him good enough you know i hit exactly where i wanted long story short he bailed out of there and i get up and i look you know and i look the situation and i go back down the hill and about 30 feet short of the deer one of those trees, those trees weren't together. One was here and another further back. But this one here had some uh, ferns laying there. And it's, those ferns blended right in with his back. Hmm. And I thought I had all deer to shoot at there. Well, I struck through those ferns and it ricocheted off top of the... There was a hump right there behind the ferns and it ricocheted off one oh, over no. the back. Yep, didn't get him. That one lost me, but they was a big guy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you can't get them all, can you? Hindsight, he didn't know I was there. You know, I, I probably should have snuck up a little closer on him, but. Can't I get them I, all. I knew I could make the shot and I hit right exactly where <laughs> I wanted to, but it wasn't what I thought it was. <laughs> Yeah, there's, few, there's been a few who got away. 
Well, we're sneaking up on two hours here. Why don't we look? You want to look through here and see if something comes to mind you want to do a quick talk about? I'll hold the microphone uh, for you. Yeah, I guess we can. Because there's some awesome pictures in there. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll do some film into that. <laughs> yeah, he's here. That's that 13 pointer there in Ontario. Yep. Let me show him. Gordon. That's the eight footer right there. That's the eight foot buck there. Yeah. Yep. Didn't you have a picture of this uh, this one? That's that's two sixty. Yep, the eight foot buck where you can see the tree that you right, stuck around right. somewhere in there. Yeah, we'll find it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And fortunately, this one I got a field photo of, but I I cut the top of my head off taking it. This one, the two sixty five. I never got a. Oh, this is the big one. Excuse me. I never got a good feel photo of them you know it was i got i got some that was a great photo. photos of it in the back of the truck and stuff but they're not good ones it's ontario it's i wounded that deer I had to go back the next day between the two-day hunt on that sucker chased him out of 35 beds before i finally finished him off 35 yeah 35 beds wow how many there. days was that that's the idaho one the same day, 35 beds? Yeah. Hmm. That's the Minnesota one I rattled in. That's also Minnesota. That's Ontario. There's a good story on that. I, I called him Rainbow. I've been raining and I'm going down the road. <laughs> and beautiful rainbow right in front of me. I drove right into it. Huh. The color was all over the ground right there. And I drove right into it. About three miles longer to quit raining, and I got out, took a little hike, and caught up with that guy. Pot of Shot gold him. there. Yeah, but then I made a long shot on him. It was probably three hundred yards, and uh, he was standing straight on, looking at me. But I got him on the side and got his liver a little bit, and. Just found a few drops of blood, but I could see his tracks where he went down around the hill and all the way down around the hill, one spot of blood. Then I can't find no more tracks after that. Hmm. I spent over an hour going around. I said, you know, and I kept going, you know, and I kept going back to that spot. I said, I'm missing something, you know. And, and I kept looking. That's another thing. You, you 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 shoot on the deer. Don't give up on it. And you know I had to go out and make another circle. You know, trying to look, find another spot of blood, and nothing, nothing, nothing. Finally, you know, I go back to that spot. I mean, this is the last known spot. You know, and I can't find nothing afterwards. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, I looked on the left, and there he is in the damn bushes, about. 30 feet away. Yeah. Standing up. Now he got up. Oh, he was up. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, he was standing there. He, he probably was bedded him. before. You know, and I never I never looked at, you know, never saw him. Right in the thick stuff. And anyway, I finished him off. And where was I? I took, took some pictures. Then it starts raining again. You see, everything's wet. Yep. I, I snapped a couple real quick pictures. The camera was getting all wet. Yep. And it's getting late in the afternoon, so I, I drag him a little ways. I can go out over here. It's uphill a little bit. Went down a little dip and finished back up. That's where my truck was parked. But she's right here. I said, only about 200 yards, but it's a hill right straight up like that. And he dressed 235 pounds. <laughs> anyway, so I decided to go out. At times, I'd pull on a deer and I'd slide back down to him. I wouldn't move him. I'd have to get a different foot and maybe only move him six inches, you know. Well, long story short, the rain turns to snow. Yeah. 
And by the time I got him in the back of the truck, there was an inch of snow on the ground. <laughs> and I had backed up the rock and pulled him up there where I could just take him straight into the tailgate. I was so soaking wet. Took me an hour's drive to get back to the motel. Yeah. When I got back to the motel and got undressed, my undershorts, <laughs> I literally ring, could wring water right out of them. When I twisted them in the sink, the water run right out of them. <laughs> that was an hour after I got in the truck. We're talking about slow. Hard work sometimes, yeah. isn't it? Oh, yeah. I got another one. Uh, Oh, that, that six-pointer. I toned it down in the swale grass and stuff, and I talked to him, and he come busting out of there. Yeah. Long haul. I dragged on him three hours, 4 o'clock. I brushed him in. Went out. As I go back the next day, going over, uh, going back in, I get a flat tire. And uh, brand, brand new truck. And uh, that was in 2008. I can't get the spare down. So, oh well. So the heck with it. I, said, I, I got it off the road. It was in a good spot. I, I leave it here. I, I thumbed the ride into town. And the next day, I said, I'll go back out and get it taken care of. So, there were two guys from Wisconsin. That's the same motel, so I, they're hunting that way. So I got to ride back out with them. Got in the, still dark, and I got in reading the owner's manual. It says do this, do that. You know, I done everything. I so thought I couldn't get that stupid tire down. <laughs> All right, that tire, you know, that new system that yeah. locking. Yeah. And so, come to ride back into town, and walked up the street from the motel because there was a tire shop there, and. Nobody around them. When next going, it turned out it's their Veterans Day. Nothing was open <laughs> yeah. until noon. No. Yeah. So I said, the heck with it. So I got a hold of a wrecker, car carrier, and come out and have it towed back into town. And go down to Canadian Tire, and uh, we see a guy inside the door, so we flagged him. And uh, so we asked him, I told him, but him as well. He says, the boss is here. Let me ask him. And the boss says, no, we ain't doing nothing until 12 o'clock. You have to wait. So I said, all right, well, the truck's here, flat tire. You got to have it fixed, do what needs to be done. So the car carrier, he took me to a rental, and I rented a pickup truck and drove back out. Yeah. And I was still three more hours dragging that deer out. Jeez. <laughs> By the time I got back to Canadian Tire, my truck was, they just finished up with my truck. They finally got to it. He was in there deep, huh? <laughs> yeah, it was a good haul out. It was on bare ground. 215 pounds. They don't drag easy. No. Nope. That's that, uh, the one I call Boots. Yep. I had a Jeep at the time. And I, no way I'm dragging him in the back of the Jeep. And it was nice and clean. And didn't want to get blood all over it, so... I tried dragging him up on a hood. I actually had put a little <laughs> dent in the cow up there. Trying, I couldn't. I couldn't get his shoulder to clear. <laughs> I couldn't get him up there, so I took a picture of it. <laughs> I ended up dragging him, hooking him up behind it, and dragging him out to the main road, and went and got some help. You did such a good job with these that's pictures. That, that's that Minnesota. Yeah. Yeah. That's the old curly buck. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, they're all they're all self taken. You probably took quite a few at a time, right? That's so you... the nine. Yeah, the one I separated it all. An old yeah. raspberry buck. <laughs> yeah, he looks big. He was. Yeah. Yeah. That's ten in Ontario. That's a Connecticut deer, muzzleloader deer. That's one of the racks over there. Yeah, it's the Minnesota deer there. That's my seventh decade buck. Like I said, I'm sick. Oh, I got a lot of... There you go. You got a few empty pages for the yeah. deer to come. I don't think I'm ever going to film, though. <laughs> you might. Who's this, who's this fella? 
That is uh, my buddy's guy's old grandfather or father. Early 1900s, Gar- eh? Yeah. 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 The beauty. Yeah, Gary Merrill's grandfather, 1920. Yeah, 1920. That's Gordon with a nice main bucket. That's his son, Gordon. He, doesn't, son look, he doesn't look so happy, though. Yeah. <laughs> Gary and Gordon one year. This is Gary's last buck, 10 pointer over in Maine. Yeah. That's old Fred Goodwin's, his buck. Some other pictures of Fred. Oh, yeah, that's, that's his 100th birthday party. Went to that. You were at Fred Goodwin's 100th yeah. birthday? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Who else was there? Oh, there were quite a, quite a few people there. What other names uh, uh, in the hunting world were there? Oh, God. I don't remember. Phil Osborne was there. Uh, Any of the Benoits were there? No, no. No. I don't know if they ever been old Fred or not. Of course, that's my great grandfather, my grandmother. That's my uncle Rupert. That's the one that was the big hunter, the tracker. During the depression, he fed the family. Those are great photos too. Yeah, there, that's him with a friend of his. That was my uncle Roland with deer he shot. I think that was back in the early '60s. That's this guy, the two sixty. Yeah, that's the the one there in the middle there. I cut my head off. I got him. Good picture of him, but and just laying there. And some smaller stuff I shot. Here's one I shot with a muzzle load. He was totally infected. Pulled his skin off. What's wrong with his face? I think he got that fighting to get his face ripped off. Huh? The only thing I can think of. These yep. are all backup pictures to the other ones. Yeah, there's the picture of that. The eight foot buck. Taken from where I shot him at. And this is the uh the note. This is the note we <laughs> yeah, I that, in case I don't put yeah. that into this uh, series, I got it on my phone, That's but a good one with Gordon Merrill's buck there. <laughs> yeah. This note says, if 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 uh, you guys can't find this video, I think you should find another spot to hunt. Thank you. And that was from uh, a hunt that uh, Carl was on with his friend in where was it, Minnesota, Michigan? U P in Michigan. In Michigan. Yeah. They uh, guy didn't like him being in their territory. Those him and his buddy mm. got out of town and shot two two giant bucks. And uh, he wants to find <laughs> find that guy and thank him. I'll try. I'll uh, either put that into this uh, video, or it'll be on the page somewhere. The full story. It's great. Yeah, that picture's here. So here's one year we got snowed out. I had a little less done. We got 30 inches of snow. <laughs> we had a shovel parking spot, but you, you couldn't walk in that stuff. Just some other pictures. Taken down like a third area. Oh, walking pictures. Yep. I can remember standing side, walking back down the road to get back to the truck, and one of these guys come down with a load like that, and the road come down, it was humped like this, and all you see was the top of that load. Then it went to come over the hump. I was down below on, I swear to God, the top of that load moved six feet. <laughs> you got to hit a little crown <laughs> the road. Holy <laughs> mackerel. No <laughs> I was about to... Down there, yeah. Which is the friends? That's my old buddy Timmy there. He's not with us anymore. He he got drinking. Yeah, that's the uh, you know. Probably one of the better pictures I got of that deer. I didn't get any good pictures. Which one is that? That's the, the one six. The big one. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We were up uh, back then. You couldn't get a good steak in Ashland, so we went uh, up to Dean's because when we shot a deer, you buy steak. You buy <laughs> and uh, so anyway. Get up to Dean's and Porter's pulled in the parking lot, and the guy come out of the 
motel on the top, second floor as we pulling in as we're getting out of the truck. He's hollering at his buddy, hey, look at this one, you know. <laughs> I said, before we could get in the place, everybody was around the truck wanting to know about it and so on and so forth. There's some of the little ones I shot years ago. <laughs> you can feed them. Yeah. <laughs> Is that Vermont? Yeah, Turkey. Yeah. Vermont years ago. A young fella back then. I guess that's damn near. It is 50 years ago. Over 50. No one, the kids were all. Right, my daughter just turned 50, so. No. <laughs> 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 oh, no, a little one. That was back in the days when Brown was done. Are we getting back to those days where Brown's down? Or you got a button yeah, last year, I'm, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I was looking for Brown last year. Come full circle. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Well, one of these days you find that first license you had there. Yeah, I... Somewhere I there. tell you, I've looked in everything in this house. It, 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 I put it somewhere or I'd be <laughs> safe keeping. I, I don't know where the heck it is. That would be, you know, I got the deer tag. And, of course, I was 15 and I all shook up about shooting the deer. <laughs> I put about 15 knots in it when I tied, tied the tag to the deer. I kept putting a knot, knot after knot, and <laughs> stringing knots about that long. <laughs> Didn't want it to fall off. Well, take that, Carl. Let's we'll uh, we'll, we'll leave some last words for folks here, and uh, it's been a pleasure ha uh, you inviting me down. Thank you. Well, thank you and for coming. Telling me all these stories. There's wonderful stories, wonderful paintings and pictures, and just a lot of history in here, and it's been great. What do you leave? What do you want to leave the folks with? On uh, I mean, we talked about per persistence, just getting out of the car and walking. You got to get into the woods. But if they want to become a successful hunter and kill a bunch of mature bucks, you know, what do you want to tell the folks? Well, the, whatever avenue they take, they work at it. You know, I mean, the hunter today is totally different. They're out there with trail cameras and looking and everything. It's a whole different hunting than I'm used to. I'm still, like I said, I'm old school. You know, I hunting, you know, like I did when I was a kid. Yeah. It's going to woods and roam. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. Just, but uh, whatever avenue you choose, whether you want to get into tracking and, but you know, like Connecticut is tough tracking. You know, I, I've tracked so many deer down here and don't take them long. They, you know, you're up in the state forest and they're right off state forest down on private land. The game is over. It's just, you know, but, uh, no, whatever avenue you, you choose. You got to find what you're good at, right? Don't don't give up on it. It's work. You get out what you put in. If you're not putting in, you're not getting out. You know. Yep. It's it's hardcore. Whatever avenue you choose, like you're a modern day hunter, use the cameras, using baits, or whatever whatever you know legal way you use to hunt. It's uh, it's it's work. You take any hunter out there is a shooting deer consistently shooting deer they're hardcore whatever avenue they're doing there you know it just doesn't you just don't walk in the woods and shoot deer they're obsessed with it you got to yeah. kind of be obsessed yeah. with it you know yeah. it's like if you wanted to get to a scratch golf you'd you'd have to yeah you, you gotta it's a lot of time clubs, <laughs> yeah. you know, more than on a golf course yeah. you got to go to driving range you got to hit balls you <laughs> yeah. know it, yeah yeah So put the work in, stay dedicated yeah. if you want, yeah. you know, yeah. and you can, you can achieve this. So he didn't start shooting big mature bucks till he was 47. These really big deer, yeah. you know, yeah. so all you guys out there that are younger than 47, I always tell her, it's not too I late. late. I was a late bloomer. Yeah. <laughs> no, when I was younger, you, know, I mean, you got a family, you got a wife, you know, that, that comes first. Yeah. You know, I, you know, I love hunting, but yeah, just less not, time. Not like when I when I go over, I take the whole hunting season off, go hunting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Boy, if you got 20, 
27 years from 20 to 47 if you were hunting the same way i mean yeah you'd have triple on the wall yeah you know yeah but it's impressive and i still have more like is that if i get out in you know i would pass a lot of good tracks yeah because uh, back in you know years ago in maine uh, there were some monsters running around i wanted that big guy (laughs) yeah yeah and some of them tracks you pass probably sported 160 inch Oh yeah, I probably I probably passed up some monster racks, <laughs> yeah. you know, because they don't have big tracks. Yeah, not every deer has a big foot. Yep. But the ones that do, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. they get you going. Yeah, yeah. Any any track that comes on to a, a monster, I mean, totally monster track is just psyched, you know, it's yeah. just. Well, thanks again, Carl. It's been a truly well, a pleasure. Thank you for coming. I really appreciate you talking with okay. me. Okay. <laughs> we'll end it there. Ontario, the white eight there is a Connecticut. It's my best Connecticut deer. Man. Now, you, you like the that's, big woods, right? That's you... Canada. And this was, uh, I can tell you a story on this little guy here. That come out of Michigan. Got a good story on that. And uh, <laughs> Little guy, what's he, he scored? Little guy from Maine. <laughs> what's the little guy score, 120? Uh, I think it was 118. <laughs> Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Uh, set of moose sheds. I, I actually found these in an area where I shed hunt, but I found them in the fall deer hunting. I didn't go in there that the spring before because they had just been in there cutting that that fall and winter. So yeah. I didn't go in there, and I went in deer hunting, and well, uh, I should have went in the spring. Uh, so I had to do a little repair around. Well, that's a Boone and Crockett, ain't it? Uh, yes, that's uh, one ninety five. Grows just under 200. Wow. And I have that big shed I had upstairs. That's this side here hmm. from that guy. I found it. I never found the other side. Looked and looked. This is a deadhead I found a couple of years ago. Another Boone and Crockett? No, that's nope, uh, 172. Makes mastic. And some more sheds and jaw bones and little are these, racks. These are all deer you shot too? Yeah. This guy here was actually my 10th 10 pointer not a big buck but it was getting late in the year where'd you shoot him ontario i see three standing so i say he's a 10 so i'd be the 10th 10 pointer <laughs> but i've gotten another one since and then what's this uh, this guy that's here? deer i own i yeah i didn't shoot that is that a white tail yes it had right. come from idaho well it looks like uh <laughs> a cross between the mule yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Smoking George, 1991. What's the story with that? Uh, buddy, my son named him George. <laughs> we gotta have a name for him. <laughs> he would say, I come up over a hump, jumped him in a doe, and they took off running. He come running across in front of me. I missed him. He turned going up a hill, and I missed him again. He went back the other way. As he was leaping over a blowdown, I put one right behind his shoulder that time, <laughs> put him down. You know, I get a little lucky once in a while with shooting. Uh, this rack here actually is a set of sheds that came from the uh, University of Maine. Yep. And up on the island. And a fella actually shot that deer that fall. Hmm. And there's no hunting in, you know, that whole town there the, between the right rivers and Penobscot. Well, somebody poached him? Uh, yeah, and they they caught the guy. He shot him out in open field before he could get him out of the field where they were all over him. Hmm. Uh, I heard tell, I don't know the truth or not, but he ended up $5,000 fine and lost his rifle. And I'd sell him the rack if he was. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, the maybe, rest of them were Maybe he'll see us. I shot. Now who's this here? Is this you? No, it's Elvis, isn't it? No, that's, <laughs> Looks that's, like Elvis. that's my grandmother. Oh, wow. It was 1917. She shot that in Wyndham, Vermont, just 252 pounds. Huh. 
It could have been Elvis, could have been you, who knows? Yeah, yeah, it could have been me. I could lie and say that was me in the younger days. <laughs> How much did that weigh? 250. Oh two. my God, look at that 52. thing. 52. So, you know, hunting's, yeah. hunting's been in your family. Yeah, yeah. yes. I'll have, to, we'll have to tell a story about your grandmother on the podcast. Here's a sign that's half covered up. That's the years ago they had the road sign between the north border and south border in uh, New Hampshire. Yeah. That's from 1953. Hmm. Between 1953 and 54 season, the boundary side for north the, and south boundary. What's that for? for? Just for the deer season? No, they had a north and south zone. Okay. For hunting, so, though, right? North of that, it was a different season. Okay. South of that, yeah. the seasons was yeah. changed. There, there's the date on them, but December 1 and 21st. And south of the sign. North of the sign, it was November 1 to the 30th. Yeah. So. I had paid dearly for that at an auction. Everybody wanted that stupid sign. <laughs> that was one foolish enough to pay for it. Well, you got lots of cool stuff here. Yeah, what's, what's, I got, what's in here? Those that, are. That looks like an important book. Yeah, these. This is my album. I don't know. Where A leather-bound book. Put it out and get some light on it. Yeah. These are. Uh, these are the deer I shot. Oh wow! This is great. Maybe we'll go through this in the podcast. Yeah. Let's have that on hand. That's the, that's the eight-footer. I actually was stepping around this spruce tree, all covered with snow. He laid there chewing his cud. <laughs> I mean, I literally, I know I could take him one more step and kick him in the ass. I say eight feet. I was probably eight feet from his head when I shot him. <laughs> and, that's a great deer. What year is that? Uh, when was that, 02? That's... Uh, the one over there, Ontario. These are all, all, I got field photos of all the ones that are hanging there. Minnesota. That one's now, Ontario. How, how are you getting these pictures back in the day there? Myself. Set the camera up with a timer. With a timer? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah a tripod with yeah. you and stuff? Yeah. That's this, the big wide 10 there? Yeah, I didn't get a, I, this is where I was staying and he took the picture. I don't know, some stupid reason I'm out there it's three degrees, and I'm trying to get the camera, and I couldn't get the timer to work. I, I forgot how to work it, you know? <laughs> so I didn't get, you know, and that's that curly horn one. Oh, wow, yeah. I got videos of him dragging him back across the river. I had to cross the river to chase him, track him down and shot him in his bed. But I, I've shot five deer in their bed over the years. Mm. Yeah, that, that little guy. That's this rack here. He looks heavy, though. Dress 218. Yes, <laughs> I won two different pools. That was uh, 2008. The winter of uh, 07 and 08 in Maine was totally uh, five foot of snow on the ground up in northern Maine. All went along. They lost a lot of deer. Hmm. And I shot him that fall. He probably never had much of a rack on him, but it might have. Raspberry. Why'd you call him Raspberry? Uh, he was in the raspberries. You can see a raspberry right there. Yeah. Hey, sit. I was looking at him, looking at him, and I tried to put horns on him. And, you know, sit. I could see something like a frame, but I can't see no points sticking up. And finally, he turned his head, and the frame went and come back. You know, I said, well, <laughs> he's halfway decent, so I, I laid him down. Yeah. I got a lot, a lot of pictures in here. And there's some pages to be filled there yeah. for, for this year. My little Hanson. The deer you're going to kill this year, right, Carl? Yeah. <laughs> you got the empty pages for them, huh? Yeah. <laughs> but there's a, there's a lot of... There's old, old Fred Goodwin with Gordon's deer. When he shot Gordon Merrill, my best friend up in Vermont, his son. Yeah, that's a beauty. Stop and see old Fred Goodwin. You know who Fred is. Yeah, I'll have to tell. I don't know much about about Fred. Oh, he was boy. a big antler collector too. Wasn't yes, he? yeah, yeah the antler collector, gun collector, all and terrific. I, I could spend <laughs> all day long telling you stories about Fred. Uh, I met Fred through my buddy Gary Merrill. Been friends with Fred for long before. Actually, he, he had a chance to buy Fred's collection and. He didn't do it because he was a little strapped for money. He could have got the money, but he didn't figure it was going anywhere. And then in the meantime, Dick Idle came in and bought it. Huh. And uh, 
the story behind that, Dick Idle bought his collection. There was like 12, 1300 racks and uh, big, some big stuff in there. And paid 25000 for the whole collection. Jeez, what a deal that and is. Then he took, grabbed the best 100 racks, sold the rest of the collection, got two ranchers from Texas bidding on it. <laughs> this was Dick Idle. You got two ranches and the, he kept then, the best hundred and sold the rest of them. Yeah, yeah, and, and probably made more than they got up to sixty-four thousand. And <laughs> the two guys there, like their foremans, was up there. The guys themselves wasn't there, and so they they called their boss and says, "Hey, you know, we're bidding against each other, you know." So they made a deal and <laughs> bought it for sixty-four thousand, and they split, they divvied up the rest of the collection between Jeez. the two. Jeez, what a deal! So where's that collection sit now? Uh, probably all over the place. Yeah. Because I only kept the best hundred, and he sold different ones out of it. Well, this is great. You build fires in there? Does the fireplace yep. work? Yep. Yes. I'm. Oh, well, what? Are, that's probably. I'm a stonemason. That's how I made my living. And yep. this was the second fireplace I ever done. And, <laughs> that's uh, gorgeous. Well, built it 48 years ago. This still still around. That's my pride and joy. That's a 95 Holy eight inch shit. shed. Look at that. 13.3 and 13 inch G. That's a Two 90 and what? 90 and 5 eighths? 90 and 5 eighths. So with an 18, it's just short of a, uh, with an 18 just, inch spread, yeah. just short of 200, but yeah. he probably <laughs> probably had a 20, yeah. 20 something inch <laughs> spread, right? Yeah, yeah. What's that mean? Uh, no, that's Connecticut. Oh, Connecticut. Yeah. Wow, that's gorgeous. That is a big. Well, when did you when did you find that stuff. one? It's a seventy incher. When did you Fellow find that? Fellow shot one? that. Come and got this scored. He shot it the year afterwards. Hmm. That's a nice one too. Yeah. That one's not still alive, is he? This this two hundred nope. incher. No. Nope. Uh, did he ever get shot? Do you know? Here's a shed. I had the crosshairs. It's not a shed. I had the crosshairs right on that buck. And I couldn't see any horns on it, and I could see his right side good, but it's ended yeah. up it got busted right out. Mm. How that happened, I don't know. But I, he took off, and I walked up to where he was laying, you know, and I see spots of blood on the bed, you know, and I see with his tracks, there was a couple inches of snow, in the uh, Jack's coming up there, a couple spots of blood. So I'm thinking, oh, he shot a horn. You know, this was in December, middle of December, muzzleload season. And uh, anyway, I, I chased him till he went off State Forest, probably down on the private land, went over the mountain down the other side. So I got thinking about that night. I said, he had to shed a horn. I said, and the blood dripping was right where his head was, you know? And uh, so I went back the next day. Of course, it warmed up and rained overnight. And snow melted off, and I get back up there to, to where he was bedded, and remember where we, direction he comes. So I went down in there, started looking. I come on for the, found, picked this horn up. Yeah. So I had a chance to shoot him. I mean, it's a nice horn. Stood there looking at each other for over a minute. Yeah. But it's quite a G2 on that thing. Yeah. Yeah. Cool story. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of neat, neat stuff. Here's a little six pointer I shot muzzle up season. Shed shed when you were pulling him out? No, I shot him and knocked his horns when he <laughs> he run a little bit and fell when he hit the ground, both horns fell off. Look at that. Yeah. And that was a crazy year. I shot three bucks that year with no brow tines. Wow. Three six pointers. Huh. One's right there. That the other side of the wall. Yeah. That six pointer right there. Yeah. That was Ontario. He dressed 215. But eh, some would say it's a seven pointer, but that was that was that was 2008. <laughs> that, was, that was a heck of a year. I shot four bucks that year. Oh. And I also shot that eight pointer. That was the only eight pointer I shot. That little eight pointer I set up main dress 218. The raspberry one. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Little raspberry buck. And that's your Boone and Crockett squirrel there, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, all the little animals and stuff, it's just stuff I've collected. Picked up on tag sales and auctions and whatnot. 
the fish I caught. That's a nice one. Got him up in a sportsman pool on Salmon River. Hmm. Full pound run. Two pound test on the tippet off a noodle rod. Yeah. Well, quite the man cave, man. Yeah. I got a lot of little interesting things over here. To probably not too many people have one of these. That's probably a Boone and Crockett mouse. <laughs> Look at that. It's here on a moose tail. <laughs> I got a little baby possum over here. Oh, yeah? Raccoon, <laughs> little, little guy. Chipmunk, a lot of little stuff. Here's some deer feed I had set up, and I made a oh, yeah, the unique leather, white, white, leather lampshade. White feet. You made that? Yeah, I had well, I had the lampshade made and yep. I'd done the burning on it. Oh, that's, that's three, awesome. Three three different scenes on it. That is gorgeous. Oh, look at that. And I got fawns. I got three fawns there in the house. One there and there's another one over there. There's another one upstairs that underneath the table up there. <laughs> yeah, I think I saw the one upstairs. Yeah. Yeah. Nice little table there too. Yeah, another set of feet I had. Uh, Joe, come on. Good girl, good girl. Good girl. She calmed right down, though. Yeah. Also, talk about history. That's my great grandfather. Oh. That was uh, 1910 up in Wyndham, Vermont. Mm -hmm. That's the Fish and Be Dam story. Fish and be damned? Yeah. What's that story? <laughs> uh, he had a neighbor that Brooke ran through the neighbor's property and my great grandfather's property. Yeah. And the neighbor used to take guests in on weekends and uh, he wanted exclusive fishing rights for that stream. So he come down and uh, asked my great grandfather if he would post the brook. So his clients, you know, could have fishing rights on it. And uh, grandfather said, no, he said, as long as I own it, he says, anybody can fish it. And uh, so the neighbor wasn't happy, went home. And then my great grandfather went down, made up a sign, put it on the tree. The sign reads, fishing be damned. Where's behind barn, boy to help dig. <laughs> or fish, fish to be damned. Where's behind barn boy to help dig? <laughs> That's and the awesome. story is that Sunday, the neighbor is coming down to go to church, see the sign, turned around, and the horse wagon and went back home. <laughs> they didn't go to church. <laughs> what kind of fish were in there? Just, just trout. trout. Brook yeah, trout just probably. a little yep. trout. Yep. Native brook trout stream. Yep. Runs right down through the town center of Woodland there, just, just down below the town hall up there. And uh, now the so? Cute story. Uh, my mother and her older brother used to go fishing all the time. Yeah. My mother would tag along with her brother Rupert, and uh, she always said that he had to fish first. You know, so he'd go down and fish the best holes first. And she one day she was fishing behind him and caught a ten-inch trout, which was the biggest trout <laughs> caught out of there in a long time. You know, she never let him forget about it. <laughs> she always talked about that. Boy, so even back in those days in Vermont, Vermont was a little liberal with people trying to post them. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Here's a picture of me, eight years old. I was over in the pasture fishing in a little mud hole for bullhead. I had an old wooden pole, and anyway, I dragged out this snapping <laughs> turtle. Nice. Kept your fingers. Yeah. Well, that's how I started fishing uh, with a eight foot long piece of black birch as a wooden pole. And it had some old, I don't know if you remember the old fly line. They had a yellow wax fly line for mm -hmm. the, the base fly line. And then they'd put the leader off of it. Well, I never had any leader material. All I had was that big yellow thing with a fit. And I, I caught trout with it. <laughs> But I ended up pulling that out of the mud hole. This goes to show you, you don't need all the fancy new gear, though. Yeah. Right? You can get it done, no matter what. There was another story, and 
Now, uh, the next following year, I was, I was nine, and uh, lived in Marlboro, Connecticut, and the Black Ledge River ran down through the Lisa farm, and they leased it to the East Glastonbury Fish and Game Club. And, uh, but my uncle leased it to him but on one condition, any kid in the neighborhood could fish the brook. You know, they could post it, but the kids could fish it. And uh, they always complained about it, but they wanted the brook. Hmm. So anyway, one day my father is headed out to spread some manure, and he gets over the brook, and he said there was a guy there fishing. He had a fly rod, and he had all the tackle <laughs> and everything. And my father says, well, I was a fishing, you know? So he said, nah, nothing. He said, then he started complaining about the kids. Ah, oh, the kids come down here. We stock. They come down here and catch everything, you know? <laughs> And about that time, I come around the corner. I'd been up in the back little stream, you know, and I had a string of native trout. I caught it with, with my old wooden pole. <laughs> <laughs> and Father says, geez, I don't know. He says, Christ, talking about the kids catching trout. He said, look at that. He says, no wooden pole. He says, you got all this fancy equipment. He said, you got outfished, you know. <laughs> oh, the guy stomped off. He was mad. <laughs>